Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, listen, I've always told you when EMP Shield does a sale, that's when I like to really bring this to you guys' attention. And they are doing a sale. But there's also some very interesting articles that I've been looking at. Actually, Yana had found one that I wanted to share with you uh, about the very real possibility of an EMP strike here on the United States in the very coming future. But with that information and the fact that they're doing a sale there with EMP Shield, 10% off your first purchase. If you buy two or more, you get 15% off uh, on those purchases as well. So it's like an additional 30% off. Plus, if you're using the INL50 code, which I'll explain at the end of the broadcast, you get extra $50 off too. So you're looking anywhere from 80 to almost 100 bucks off an EMP Shield if you decide to get one for your car, your home, or whatever else you may need it for. But um, my wife had sent me an article, and actually the link was uh, not there. I, I know she had told me it was on The Hill. And so I did find this article here on The Hill where they were talking about the uh, you know China's surprise years and the planning and EMP attack. Now, this article here that I'm looking at is from June of 2020. So that's last year's article. And... It's still, though, very concerning what's in the article here. Now, they, of course, they go into the pandemic and talk about how that this caught the U.S. off guard and how the U.S. spent decades and billions of dollars preparing for biological warfare. And, uh, you know, but yet really they're not prepared. And so they're, they're talking about how that China has taken note in that as well as uh, other nations, North Korea, things like that. But, of course, they also have their own issues with this pandemic because it's all part of a global new world system. And quite frankly, this is why we're dealing with, even now, uh, the possibility of the United States being hit with an EMP attack. And to me, it, it will happen. It is just a matter of time. And the reason I say that is because that's to help to destroy this country. Uh, it's also because of their 2030 agenda and the uh, su sustainability development, the, uh, oh, we're destroying the, uh, the environment. They're going to want to destroy your vehicles as well. Uh, and because why? We have all computer-driven type vehicles. You do an EMP pulse attack, you'll really stimulate the economy. Won't do a whole lot of good for us as individuals, but they'll destroy all of our cars in America. And uh, so th these guys that are pushing for making these battery battery operated vehicles that have just not taken off very well, uh, just have an EMP attack and destroy the vehicles. And even if China isn't the one that does it, let the U.S. do it anyway and just blame it on China. And wow, guess what? We just created a brand new huge market for battery operated electric vehicles. Yeah, would the American government really do that? Uh, oh, yeah, I can believe they would do it without a doubt. But anyway, uh, to kind of give you some more information from this article right here, uh, also they were noting in here that adversaries also have noticed that the ongoing U.S. cold civil war, according to federal authorities, radicalized young people on both sides of the political divide, and criminals have been infiltrating recent protests, rioting, toppling statues, setting fires, the swelling counterculture, anarchy, and self-condemnation is reminiscent of 1968. A year of riots and anti-war protests in America that is recognized by most historians as a psychological turning point toward U.S. defeat and Vietnam War. North Korea applauds Americans' domestic chaos as proof that democracy does not work and future belongs to the totalitarian states such as China. America looks fragile to dictators who would replace the U.S.-led world order with a new one dominated by themselves. Well, guess what? It won't be dominated by themselves. It's going to be dominated by that little country in the Middle East, just south of Lebanon. But yeah, they will use China. They will use North Korea. They already have in bringing down the United States. So it goes on to say in the article, some people might think that things similar to Pearl Harbor incident are unlikely to take place during the information age. It could be 
regardless as, yet it could be regarded as the Pearl Harbor incident of the 21st century if a surprise attack is conducted against the enemy's crucial information system of command and control and communications by such means as electronic warfare. Electric magnetic pulse weapons, telecommunications, interference and suppression, computer viruses, and if the enemy is deprived of the information it needs as a result, even a super military power like the United States, which possesses nuclear missiles and powerful armed forces, cannot guarantee its immunity. Now, before I read on in the article, let me kind of point that issue out. How many of you guys remember? Oh, wrong one. Where did I have it at there? Um, well, hey, you know what? Yeah, here we go. USS Donald Cook, which became famously known as the USS Donald Duck, because when it was within 75 nautical miles of the Russian border, or 70 nautical miles of the Russian territory at Kaliningrad, uh, it was uh, rendered, as they did a very close flyby of the ship there, which America called, you know, dangerously coming too close to our ships there, the two Sukhoi Su-24s, they rendered this ship totally useless. In fact, it got the nickname the USS Donald Duck is what happened. And then you guys might remember the USS Fitzgerald. All right. Well, here's a very interesting article that I just ran into. USS Fitzgerald, the victim of electric magnetic warfare attack. Uh, yeah, it is actually believed to be that. It talks about in this article how that the... Uh, the USS Fitzgerald, which was actually uh, supposedly rammed some kind of fishing boat uh, out there in the, I believe in the China Sea there, but was actually the victim of a EMP attack on that ship. So the vulnerability of the U.S. military is very great. This is what I read in the article. But toward the end of this strange article, and again, I am not familiar with this website, goes the author of, of the article that I'm reading, at, reading from you now by Joseph P. F. Uh, Farrell. He states here, um, I am presenting it for your consideration, as I know many readers are following this story. We have, we have the following. The first container ship approached the USS Fitzgerald. The Fitz was still fully functional. An airplane or drone flying overhead was responsible for the energy pulse that killed all electricity and on the warship. The whole event took place in the wee hours of the morning from 1.30 to 2.30 a.m. The container ship was required to turn back towards the Fitzgerald to do its job as the command by whoever uh, Ian pulsed the ship. Oh, by the way, I forgot that was a container ship that collided with it, not a fishing vessel. Stand corrected on that. In turning back to do the job, the container ship did not have a great positioning to destroy the vessel and so ended up only disabling rather than sinking the ship. Thus, the CIA planned, a.k.a. false flag attack, could not be used as many on board the Fitzgerald saw what really happened and survived. The CIA plot was probably an attack by Russia or China or North Korea. A contingency plan was then quickly implemented, one that they could uh, feed to those present as a legitimate story. The bottom line here is that the U.S. attack was quite likely a false flag operation. In the traditional of the USS Maine, remember the Maine, the RMS Listinia, World War I false flag, and the USS Maddox, a.k.a. the Gulf of Tonkin incident. So what are we talking about here? The United States in general has become very susceptible to an EMP strike. Our enemies are definitely using EMP types of devices in order to render us totally useless. Well, it's only a matter of time before we're going to see that here in the mainland the United States. And could it be that our politicians, nah, Biden would never do that, would he allow that to happen to us? Oh, wow, I forget. He's on the China payroll. And it pays a whole lot better than what it does being president of the United States, I am sure. Let's read on in the article here on the Hill. As noted in a May 14, 1996 People's Liberation Army newspaper about a surprise attack on the U.S. All right. The, notice where this is from. May 14, 1996. People's Liberation Army, the Chinese newspaper, right? Critical information systems. It said this. When a country grows increasingly powerful economically and technologically, 
it will become increasingly dependent on modern information systems. The United States is more vulnerable to attacks than any other country in the world. Boy, aren't they telling you the truth. And then notice what the Hill also noted here, right under that in yellow. So it is very bad news. More than a year after President Trump issued an executive order on coordinating resilience against electromagnetic pulses that the Department of Energy and the Department of Homeland Security have done nothing to protect the national electric grid or other critical infrastructures. That sustains the lives of 330 million Americans. Instead, non-expert bureaucrats conducted endless studies and conferences to wrangle over technical issues, in effect reinventing the wheel regarding EMP. That were resolved long ago by real EMP experts. The coordination process for a national EMP preparedness is the same kind of bureaucratic fumbling that Washington regards as action, which gave us the biological warfare of unpreparedness and inability to properly respond to the, ooh, I don't even want to say that because that is such a lie. Anyway, hopefully the U.S. Navy is better prepared to cope with an EMP attack than are the DOE or the DHS. A nuclear EMP attack against U.S. aircraft carriers is the key to victory in China's military doctrine, as noted in February 12, 2000 article in the official newspaper of the Shanghai Communist Party Central Committee. See, look at that. The weak points of a modern aircraft carrier are, as a big target, the fleet is easily for a satellite or a reconnoiter uh, and locate a high degree of electronization is like an Achilles heel for an aircraft carrier fleet, which relies heavily on the electro, electro, uh, excuse me, electronic equipment as a central nervous system. Hello, that's about everything here in the United States as well, too. They know that your automobiles are also all computer generated and everything else. It's not like the cars in the old days where you could just take and... Uh, you know, if something were to go out in that, change the battery, change the points, plugs, and keep on going, right? Or even an old diesel car had no computer or anything of that nature in there. You couldn't do this with an electric magnetic pulse. But now we are more vulnerable than we have ever been in the world. And they want their new world order, and they're going to get it one way or the other. And of course, our entire infrastructure in this country, whether you have electricity in your home, whether you have all of your appliances, and the appliances are not just electric, they've also got computer chips and everything else in there that you'd never be able to replace, especially if the economy collapses as a result of an EMP strike. So I can only imagine what we're in for, unless we take a little bit of safeguards. And that's something that I think the EMP shield can really help with you on. And so all you got to do, you've got home protection, vehicle protection, RV protection, generator model protection, solar wind protection, radio protection now. You know, I've always been really a big fan of the, of the uh, car because I don't want to be separated from my wife if something were to happen. Like right now, she's not home. So I don't want something bad going on. So if I added that to the, to the cart there, I got that one in, right? And if you go there, you're going to get that discount because they've got the sale going on right now. Memorial Day sale. I'm going to save $38.90. But on top of that, I can apply my INL50 code, apply the coupon, and now I'm going to save an additional $50. Bucks. And so now my total is only $300.10 instead of $389. So again, I like to bring it up when there's a sale because I want you to be able to benefit on these things. And uh, if there's a sale going on, I always want you to be able to be aware of that. But also, too, let me really quickly, because this was something that came out that was kind of interesting. Um, oh, they even got a European model. I didn't know about that. Okay. But now they have the radio EMP protection. So they have them for the different types of radios that you may have, especially those of you that are preppers. All right. So... Definitely check all this out. I don't understand any of that right there. But, you know, if you clicked on it, let's just say we clicked on one of these things here, right? They're $329. Uh, doesn't look like the Labor Day discount is, a, oh, yeah, Memorial Day sales. All right, so I'm going to add that to the cart. Let's just see what happens because I don't know if that's how that one works there. Uh, I'm going to apply the INL50 code, apply the coupon and it's going to drop the price of that one as well. Um, so we got two of the coupons. 
and Memorial Day. Oh, you got 15% off instead. So it actually added more. Now we're down the, we're down to $510 for what you would have paid $718 for. Yeah, you saved quite a bit. I mean, wow, that's a lot of money actually. So I don't even know how that works. I didn't quite understand how that how that adds up down there, but over $208 you saved off of those two items alone. So I really think it's a great time if you've been putting it off again because you missed the last sale and you want to get it. And the fact of some of the things that I'm just wanting to bring to your attention of what we're facing in the coming future, this is the time to do it. Um, I actually got one in just recently myself that I need to apply. And I'm actually, um, uh, that one I actually I got to put on my uh, solar panels. Uh, because that's something else. I haven't installed them as of yet, but I want them protected so that when they are up and running, I don't take a chance on those getting knocked out as well. And they have it for that as well. All kinds of stuff out there, as I said on there. And the European model, like I said, I hadn't seen that as of yet either, but they do have a European model. So that's great to know for our friends that are over in Europe. Uh, so you can get a European model. And uh, let's see, three-phase protection. I have no idea what all that is. But anyway, something about a three-phase protection. So I guess that would be important to somebody that might need to know that. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. And uh, Yana is going to be on here in a little bit. I'm going to plug her in uh, remotely. And we're going to talk about some very fascinating things that are going on over in Israel, as well as other things about the plan. Okay. God bless you all. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And of course... Uh, visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, where you can always see our videos there. And if you want to support the broadcast, please do. Danone Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. And you can also donate online. Don't forget, oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, our videos on iConnect are now in Hebrew. So those of you that uh, that uh, that have been wanting to share these things with your friends uh, in, in Israel, uh, things of that nature there, uh, please, by all means, do. And uh, I can just quickly, I'll share that with you just so you know. I need to talk a little bit more about this, but especially my teaching videos there. That's what I really want people in Israel to be able to hear about. Um, so I'll quickly go to my, there it is right there on your screen, Hebrew. So if you were to play this video here, that's actually about Naftali Bennett. Let me go to the teaching. This is the one that, has really been a blessing to me. 25,000 people have watched that video. Let me just quickly, um, let's see. Okay, there we go. I want to play that real quick so you guys can hear this for yourself. But um, Good evening, you just friends. click right there, Hebrew. And now I speak to, he to, to you in Hebrew. Okay, so isn't that awesome? So the, now our friends in Israel can hear in the Hebrew language. And uh, I'm also going to be discussing, too, again, about my good friend that passed away in the rail car uh, incident over in Italy, his family. Uh, that was an assassination, by the way. And this is what we were afraid of. But we'll talk about that. I'll probably do that over on Patreon. I don't think I want to discuss that here. It's a very, very sensitive subject. Uh, so I'll probably be doing a video about that incident over there on Patreon. And uh, also I'll update you guys as well on Patreon about something that our government has done to protect us about incoming asteroids. We have destroyed three of them. Anyway, God bless you and thank you for listening.